Okay. Welcome at the first RubberCon. I hope to do this again. The time schedule has, uh, has shifted quite a bit due to technical problems, of course. Computers are uh, not nice. <coughs> Thanks to Peter for supplying an extra video camera. Am I in the picture? <laughs> Okay, thanks. Um, we're shifting the, the time schedule to make sure that the most important demos are, uh, are on film. So we're going to start with uh, the Boron uh, demo. It's, uh, it's an OpenGL uh, 3D demo that uh, <coughs> Carl Robillar uh, made especially for us. But uh, after the conference it will be downloadable from uh, his Boron website. Boron is, of course, uh, the current open source uh, <coughs> alternative to the Rebel programming language. And one of Carl Robillard's uh, focus points is uh, 3D. I've got the Boron folder here. And I've got several versions of the demo here. I'll try the latest version. Uh, can you see it? No, the picture is not very sharp. Maybe, you, uh, maybe we can get it a bit sharper. Oh, I see these, the newest version are just the data files. So to make sure that we get a working configuration. It's me a Is this scherp for I'll do the version that we tested works. Uh, the demo is here. Boron is uh, in another folder. Here's a, a Boron version compiled with OpenGL included. And the demo has a, a starter Boron script. So here we go. I've configured the demo for, uh, for full screen. So here you get a, a nice uh, 3D uh, wireframe that's filled in. And uh, if you uh, use the mouse, you can uh, manipulate the image. Of course, this is fairly standard stuff in, uh, in 3D. But this is really the first time that you can uh, conveniently do this kind of stuff from a, a, a rebel type language. I think this is a fairly big deal for us. Well, Carl uh, made a, a few slide for, slides for us. And because he's living far away, he can't come himself. So I'm going to uh, present <coughs> his slides for him. <coughs> well, I think people here know what Boron is. Freddy has been at my Boron presentation at Software Freedom Day and uh, of course Peter has been introduced to Boron more than he wants. <laughs> but this is for people who don't know Boron yet or maybe don't even know Rebel yet. Uh, Rebel is uh, an innovative programming language that is focused on uh, making it relatively easy to implement domain-specific dialects. And domain-specific dialects are pretty much the holy grail of programming language design. Everyone has the, uh, the impression that uh, domain-specific languages can be used for many things, but traditionally it has been very hard to, to make domain-specific languages. 
not according to Peter, but Peter is an, uh, an uber programmer, so I'm, 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 I'm speaking towards the more general population, Peter. Uh, uh, for for uh, normal mortals, uh, Rebel makes it very easy uh, to have a, a go at making domain-specific dialects. And uh, the nice thing about that is that if you uh, implement an alternative to Rebel, uh, it's quite easy to make it <coughs> almost Rebel compatible because uh, Rebel works in, in dialects and domain specific languages anyway. So Boron can be viewed as a, a, a dialect of Rebel. But what Carl Robillard is telling us here that Boron, according to him, is not really uh, a, a dialect of Rebel in the technical sense but more in the, in the normal human sense that languages uh, resemble each other. Uh, there were two predecessor languages. Uh, this family of Boron, it started with Orca, and Orca had the goal of being uh, almost rebel compatible. And then there was an in-between uh, implementation, Toon. And Toon was fairly different because it, uh, its default grammar was uh, a postfix, like fourth. And uh, that's quite, quite difficult to wrap your head around, so it's not very suitable for, uh, for normal programmers to use. So I'm very pleased that uh, uh, this project has now switched to its third design, its third implementation, and that Boron is a, a, a postfix language again, just like Orca before it and uh, Rebel. But the goal is not to be completely Rebel compatible. So if you want to, to have programs that run on both Rebel and Boron, you have to, uh, to make some extra effort to be able to do that. Um, and one of the uh, most important differences is, it says here at two thirds of the slide, that uh, Boron does not have infix operators. As I just said, the, the concept of the language is that it is uh, uh, postfix, like, uh, like Rebel and, uh, and Lisp, Lisp style languages. Uh, and if you want infix operators, they call that syntax shiver. Because you can also write an, uh, an operator with two operands uh, as postfix before the, the two operands. But uh, the normal human way of writing that is one plus one. And that is supported by uh, Rebel, but not by Boron. And, uh, I think it's not a, a goal of Carl. But I would be very pleased if he would change his mind, of course, because. Uh, one of the things about Rebel is that it is uh, designed to be as, as easy as possible. And uh, I think uh, infix operators are an important part of that. So at the moment, Boron has no infix operators, and uh, I think Carl is not planning them. And to be honest, if you are programming, you don't really miss them very much, because uh, you find out that you're using them very little in regular programs, but they would still be very nice to have to be able to, to write standard uh, math uh, expressions such as 1 plus 1 or 2 times 3 in that form. Well, another limitation, and I, that is not a really fundamental one. Are the, the mathematics freaks uh, not complaining about something missing like this? Uh, not many people are complaining about Boron because it's a very young project. It's, uh, it's uh, slightly uh, over a year old now. And it can al already do quite a lot because it is based on the uh, previous about four years of uh, work and tune development. But uh, other than that, uh, it's a young project, so it's not being used very much yet. So if you, uh, if you're looking for complaints, I think you have to do the complaining yourself. But some people will complain about the lack of infix operators. Me, for example. Well, the, the missing uh, internet protocols, that's, I think that's just a matter of it not being implemented yet. Uh, there is a, a network port system 
but that's the, the basic network system at the, the TCP IP level. So uh, there are TCP uh, network ports. And the point is, of course, that if you want to have all the standard protocols that are built into Rebel, you have to uh, implement them on top of TCP IP ports. So you can do that. And uh, uh, Carl Robillard, uh, <clears throat> he could favor himself a bit more because he says there are no internet protocols yet, but just recently he wrote an, uh, an, an SMTP client. So there is a, a, a first SMTP uh, implementation uh, for Boron on top of the TCP uh, network ports. And the others, well, they still need to be done. But then again, uh, there are many protocols included in Rebel 2, but Rebel 3 is really in the same situation. The new Rebel 3 project only has a few network uh, protocols to date, so it's really lacking the, the same protocols that Boron is currently lacking. And we'll, we'll get to that in a later presentation where I'll present my, uh, my binding with the curl networking library that adds all those protocols uh, quickly. Well, another thing Carl mentions is that uh, this, this is a plus. Uh, Rebel doesn't have this. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Rebel, uh, a series, that means a, a series of elementary values, uh, they, ha can, they have an index. So a series is a, a, a row of elementary values with an index that points to uh, an index in that series. And you can manipulate that index. And that's very nice for, uh, for regular programming. It's really used all the time. But uh, there is, of course, a, a fundamental uh, a limit there because uh, in some cases you would want to point to the end of a series. You would not, you can, with an index, you can point to a start position, but you can't point to an end position. So it's always from the index to the end of the series. And uh, Boron has an extra data type, uh, it can do uh, slices. So uh, in, in Boron, a series has not only a start index, but you can also make a slice including an end index. And that can, uh, in, in certain programming circumstances, that can be very good for performance. Because you, you don't have to make a copy of the series, because you can always take a, a slice out. Well, the, uh, the main point of the demo, Boron uh, GL, Boron has an, uh, a binding with uh, OpenGL, the, the common uh, 3D subsystem. And uh, it's a, a really very rebel-like uh, binding. Uh, it adds uh, particular uh, data types to Boron. Uh, the rebel design is a, a, a data type rich language, so it's uh, uh, a, a natural thing to introduce uh, extra data types for a binding like this. So there are uh, special data types for 3D and uh, functions of course for uh, functionality of the binding. And uh, the, mo the nicest thing, because Rebel is uh, designed to make domain specific languages, of course this OpenGL binding is also controlled through domain specific languages. And uh, Carl tells us here that uh, uh, the goal of this binding is, is to, uh, to uh, give you access to the full force of OpenGL uh, and not to uh, abstract things away. So you still need to, to know how OpenGL works, but uh, the fact that you can control it through Boron and especially domain-specific dialects makes it a, a lot easier to program. And of course, this is all uh, still uh, under development. <coughs> so it will do a lot more in the future, but we'll see what it can already do. Now, some specifics. Uh, OpenGL is, of course, a, a very specific subsystem uh, with uh, data types that are implemented in the hardware in the video cards and uh, even special uh, shader languages and this is all uh, very nicely integrated into Boron. 
This is detailed stuff that uh, OpenGL people will understand. And uh, you will need to know this uh, to, uh, to program OpenGL in Boron. So Boron doesn't hide this, but gives you uh, easier access to it. the uh, OpenGL details in here. This is a, a, a lens flare. <clears throat> the way this, uh, this light uh, from this star uh, breaks in the uh, virtual lens. And uh, this is a, a fairly new feature of OpenGL. So if you have uh, older versions of GPL, uh, my understanding is that you can't do this. Well, some specific features that are in this boron programming. Uh, the uh, flashing uh, lights on the starship. Uh, the uh, shadow from the, the starlight. The shadow of the, uh, the top of the Enterprise that falls over the starship. And the, uh, the ragged shadows that it it generates. And this uh, starship is uh, quite complicated. It's made out of uh, a lot of uh, textures on vertexes. And this planet is uh, uh, one texture rectangle that's uh, wrapped around uh, <coughs> a ball, a planet form. So the planet, in OpenGL terms, has little detail, only the detail is in the texture. But the starship is made up of many small textures. Guy, Peter has something to complain. Complaint? <laughs> yeah, I heard him. No, no complaint. It's just that the you can see that the, the starship isn't round and the planet isn't round either. It's made of uh, lines. Lines. Yeah, that's that's the way OpenGL works. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> uh, 
you see that here in the back it is round because yeah, it's, it's, it's farther away. And here you see a slight effect of lines. Yeah. And the quality of that is dependent on your, your video card and the driver and uh, the settings. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the number uh, of lines probably. Pardon? And the number of lines. Yeah, but the, uh, uh, the, the number of triangles really. Mm -hmm. Where 3D is built up out of triangles, so you can see that there's uh, one triangle here probably that creates a, a, a line. But uh, the thing about uh, 3D is that uh, the same rendering can be done in different quality levels. So the the, uh, okay. the, the Nvidia driver is installed, mm -hmm. and there's a, a configuration utility from Nvidia mm -hmm. uh, where you have sliders for the quality settings. Okay. And this this laptop is quite comparable to current netbooks, so it's it's not completely powerless, but it's not a powerful desktop monster mm -hmm. either. So the quality setting is somewhere in between. So I understand. So if you have a, a newer video card or a larger processor, then you get a, a higher quality level. Mm -hmm. And then the, there this line will be broken up into more triangles, and then you get short lines so that it appears rounder. Well, as Carl says, it's, it's all under development and uh, the past week we worked with him to, uh, to finish the demo and to, to get it working on this laptop and to, to make it smooth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, every ca everything can be improved and will be improved. And uh, of course, the, uh, the the content for a presentation like this can be uh, gotten in many places. So the, the music and the the planet texture were taken from elsewhere. And uh, yeah, whether there are complaints about boron or whether people are using it. Uh, Boron is uh, slightly over a year old now, and it's an open source project. So it's uh, at the moment it is obscure, <coughs> but uh, as with any uh, open source project, that can change, and uh, you have uh, a certain level of uh, influence over whether that changes or not. So Carl uh, invites any uh, contributions. This is the uh, website for Boron. It's part of the uh, Orlam uh, project, and the Orlam project uh, includes the uh, Orca and Toon languages, but they're now obsolete. They're superseded by Boron. Pardon? The uh, email address, Wicked Smoke. Yeah, he's had that address for a, a very long time. Maybe you just lose in Amsterdam or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next to a coffee shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a sound with that scene, so I'll do backspace. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> so, that was the Boron demo. We'll, uh, we'll invite uh, Nainat now to uh, do his presentations. Okay.